Hi, this is Sahana. In this video, we are going to learn how to handle form submission in ASP.NET Core MVC application. If you want to watch related videos, then you will find playlist link in the description. You can watch all the related videos. We are working on this application. In our last video, we have designed an employee and our department forms. We have just designed this form, but the application is not yet ready to handle this form submission. First step is to create HTML form. We are done with this step. Second step is to set the controller and action method to handle this form. See, here we have a form tag. Now we are now we are going to use ASP controller attribute to specify the controller and ASP action attribute to specify the action method. See, in our case, employee is the controller name and inside employee controller add action method will handle this form submission. Next step is to set the method attribute to post. We are going to use method attribute and set its value to post. If you don't specify the method attribute as post, the form will use get method. But there is a problem. If you use get method, then form data will be appended to the URL as query parameters. And then anyone can see that data. So it is not recommended. This is at the view side. Now we are going to work at the controller. First, we should make sure that our application has controller by name employee. Let's verify that. We have controllers folder. If you expand, you can see we have employee. We have employee controller and employee controller should have action method by name add. Let's open employee controller. We have add action method. We have this add action method, but this method handles HTTP get request. So we should have one more method with the same name and we should decorate that method with HTTP post attribute. Let's copy this method. Now we are going to decorate this method with HTTP post attribute. Now we should modify this method to receive form data. For example, I can say string first name And I will add one more parameter string last name. Here I have specified first name and last name. This first name and last name correspond to this value of name attribute. Your name is first name and name is last name. We are using the value of this attribute to receive the data. After receiving the form data, we have to process the form data. This is where we can write database logic. Receiving the form data and sending it to the database involves several steps. In this session, let's just focus on form submission. Let's quickly run this application and see whether we are able to receive form data. Okay, I'll click on add employee. I'll fill the details. Now, I'll not fill rest of the details. I'll click on submit. I just want to see whether I'm able to receive data. See, I'm able to receive first name and last name. Now I'll repeat the same thing with our department form. Here I have our department form. See here I have a form. Now I will use ASP controller attribute and I will say department and I will use ASP action attribute and I'll say add and I'll say method is post and I will say method is post. Now I will open department controller. I will copy this add method and I will use HTTP post attribute. Now I will say name and I'll save this one put a breakpoint here okay let's click on add department uh, I'll say HR I'll click on submit this time it's null this is because if you look at this add department form here we have input field but there is no name attribute I will add name attribute and I will assign the value name and save and let's test it again let's submit this form 
this time we are able to receive form data this is very much important but in real time scenario we don't go for this approach we use model binding let's learn model binding in our next session these are the few important steps that we have to follow to handle form submission that's it for today's session see you soon in the next video thank you